under arrest. What for? Vagrancy. No visible means of support. Etc. Etc. Et blah blah blah. One two three four five six seven eight. We'll try to get so packed, but I don't think it'll go along. Hey, maybe we can get the uh, the lawyer. What's his name? Duff. Marshal Duff. It's cold. It's eleven thirty already. We're gonna be freezing our shirt tails off here. Cheek. Uh, Kenny, uh, have us some coffee here. Huh? Just black, huh? Regular. Shouldn't make Johnny pack long to beat a vagrancy charge. And uh, prune Danish. Will you give your name for the record? Packetcheck. John Packacek. You're also known as Johnny Pack. Yes, sir. It's a short for Packacek. Oh, Mr. Pack, what's your occupation? I'm um, self-employed. I'm, I'm a businessman. I see. What exactly is your business, Mr. Pack? Oh, I've uh, I've got lots of interests. Well, let's take one. I believe you're president of uh, one corporation. Tell us about it. Oh yeah, Bonnie uh, Frill Fashions for preteens. You know, dresses. You know, like. Uh, Junior sizes, sub -deb. Your Honor, I should like to submit in evidence corporation papers for Bonnie Frill Fashions, Incorporated of 532-12 7th Avenue. Also a credit rating for Bonnie Frill from Dun and Brad Street and stockholders reports for the years 1962, 3, and 4, which show a gross in excess of $3 million in accounts receivable alone. Where's Salizi? He was supposed to be here. What's the matter? You need the bureau chief? You can't handle a simple vagrancy case. And a net profit for the first quarter of the year of somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars, which is a pretty good neighborhood. <laughs> all right, Mr. Pack, that's all. Mr. Coster, you're a witness. Mr. Coster. No questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I should like to move for a dismissal of the entire charge. It's obvious that the whole affair was trumped up as a political device to harass a respectable businessman. Respectable. Your Honor, this man is known to every law enforcement agency from the FBI down. Maybe he's muscled into a legitimate business, but he certainly didn't make his money manufacturing dresses for short-waisted girls. Your Honor, with all due respect, this is of no you interest to me or my... I know it. So do you, Counselor. Johnny Pack controls extortion, policy, gambling, prostitution. Counselor, what are you trying to... You can find him in the Harrison Commission reports, and the grand jury presentment to King's County. I have got a complaint that I am answering to You can find him in the departmental hearings and the bribery of three I police lieutenants. I don't see any indictment for prostitution or gambling or anything else. What are you trying to do, amend the United States Constitution single-handed? What are you, the Gestapo? Oh, come on. Your Honor, I fess my motion. The idea that this man is a vagrant is a piece of fantasy dreamed up by a police department who might be better employed protecting our citizens against violence and organized crime. Most of which pays off to Johnny Pack. Your Honor, I submit All that... right, all right. Mr. Coster, I don't see how you can justify a prosecution for vagrancy. Got anything to say before I rule? All right. You know, Coster, I must I'm say... Right. All right. Mr. Coster, you stay right here. Here. I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. Mr. Coster! Now, 
This may not be the highest court in this state, but I take it seriously. Every preliminary hearing I conduct is part of the machinery of justice. I realize that. Now, you just be quiet and listen. Any man who comes before me is going to get the same treatment, whether he's some wino from Third Avenue or the president of the stock exchange. But let me tell you one thing. I will not have my court used as a club to beat somebody with. Now, if you have any charge to bring against this man for serious crimes, well, you just better work up your case and bring it before the grand jury and get an indictment on evidence. But don't come in here with trumped up charges and illegal arrests and ask me to waste my time throwing them out of court as fast as you bring them in. You know better than that, Coster. Don't let me ever see you come before me with a case like this again. Complaint dismissed. The point I'm trying to make is, if the district attorney's office can use the law for personal vengeance without any regard to basic constitutional rights, then we're headed for a police state. Hi, Mr. Costa. Look at that, will you? Johnny Pack on the television. I ought to run a minute again. What for this time, Bernstein? Jay Walking? Whose idea was that pickup? I don't know. Listen, I get my orders. Ask Captain Michaels over at the precinct. Mr. Duff, in the Harrison Commission report, Mr. Pack was named as the payoff man in the Broderick Kaplan bribery case. Do you have any comment on that, sir? Well, now, it's easy, isn't it, for some headline-hunting politician to smear a man. Yes, sir. But, but they've never come up with an indictment. Now, it's a temptation, of course, for ambitious young assistant district attorneys like my good friend Mr. Costa to uh, build a reputation for themselves at somebody else's expense. Well, are you saying so? Don't forget, this is still America. You couldn't make it stick, huh? Stick? <laughs> Look, do me a favor, will you? Next time you, you, you're hauling a millionaire, don't charge him with vagrancy. See if his collar's open and book him for indecent exposure. What are you going to bar up for? What do you care? Listen, it doesn't hurt to beat on them hoods every once in a while, just to keep them moving. Yeah, well, next time you stand up and let Judge Lowenthal wrap you in the mouth. Ah, what do you care what that old buzzard well, says? The trouble is, he's right. There's one thing Johnny Pack is not without, his visible means of support. He gets a piece of the take of every racket in town. So? Tell it to the grand jury. For the grand jury, Officer Bernstein, I need witnesses. To Lowenthal hollered at you. Forget it! Oh, you want a sandwich or something? I gotta hang around down here. I got a molestation in the afternoon. Come on, forget it. You think he's the only gone up that ever beat a rap? Look, Costa, what's packed to you? Forget it. Uh, would, would you care to make any further comments, sir? Well, I think Judge Lowenthal put it pretty well. He sent Costa back upstairs with his tail between his legs. That's all for now. Nice talking to you, Frank. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Pack, do you have any comment? You were on the 6.30 News. Just before the weather. There's a mass of cold Canadian air coming in over the Great Lakes. How much of it do they use? Mm, about a minute. Oh. It was that lawyer, mostly. Yeah, Duff. Marshal Duff. I bet they made him sound like Clarence Darrow. Well, Dave, why did he have to mention you by name? <laughs> that was nothing. You should have heard Judge Lowenthal go after me. That isn't fair. Well, he was right. We had a lousy case. We deserved it. Well, why didn't you go on television? Hey, why didn't they interview you? Policy. Tony Silesia makes all the public statements for the division. Well, where was he? That's a good question. A very good question. Where was he? He dumps his bomb in my lap and then he disappears. And I have to stand up in court with a straight face and try and prove that, uh, that Johnny Pack is a vagrant without any visible means of support. He smokes more than I make in a year. Hey, honey, could you help me with this? Yeah. Dave, I could have died for you. Why did they have to arrest that pack in the first place? Well, somebody thought it'd be a good idea to annoy him. That's a theory, you see. Uh, here's Johnny Pack. He's been the big man since Anastasia was shot in that barber chair. You name it, he's in on it. Policy, prostitution, narcotics, a little bit of murder, a touch of assault, piece of Las Vegas. He gets cold in the winter. He doesn't go south. He sends for Miami. So, uh, nobody's been able to touch him, see? So, uh... Prove that we have an efficient administration of justice. They, they haul them in for vagrancy. Vagrancy. Say, what is this? Uh, just open it, honey. But they missed the best scene on television. In the men's room. The obligatory dramatic confrontation. I ran right into it. Pack? Now, if it interests you, his suit coat is lined with orange silk with a delicate India print. <laughs> Did he say anything to you? Uh, no. He, uh, he, uh... He smiled. 
He uh, held the door open for me, and then he smiled again. And then he smiled some more. He has excellent dentistry. My suit coat is lined with nothing. Say, do you need this thing? No. Dave, don't you have any recourse? I mean, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your idea. But isn't it up to Salisi to explain publicly? Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to stand on one foot till Tony Salisi volunteers for a public rap. He has a high survival quotient. Well, how's yours? Do you enjoy being punished? You ought to tell Salisi that... Listen, it isn't Salisi. He's a limited man. He operates within those limitations. It's Pack, Johnny Pack. There in the men's room, it was Dave Coster and Johnny Pack and his beautiful gold bridge work, smiling. Dave, I don't see why you're so upset. Because last night, at 6.30, and again at 11, I was mentioned on television between the weather and your ever-loving savings bank. Yeah, it didn't look too good for the office, did it? Creates the wrong image. I'll tell you who else is doing a little image creating. Judge Lowenthal. I heard about that. The judge is getting close to retirement age. Where were you yesterday? What do you mean? I didn't draw up that complaint. I didn't order that arrest. All I did was stand up down naked and get hit in the head with a wet fish. Well, if you didn't think you could make the charge stick, why didn't you drop it? Why didn't I drop it? Look, who came out and parked his unpressed pants on my desk and said, Dave, this is policy. We're going to lean on Johnny Pack. I know. It puts you in a tough position. I wrote you a memo yesterday because I've been in this office long enough to know when to get it on paper. I told you I didn't think we could make it stick. I told you I thought Marshall Duff would make us look like a bunch of jerks. Yeah, I saw it on my desk when I got in this morning. As a matter of fact, it's... Will you stop perambulating? Where were you yesterday? Now, Dave, calm down, will you? I had an important meeting upstairs on budget. I had a luncheon date with a couple of DAs from Idaho or Iowa or somewhere. Now, I'm sorry you got caught with your pants down. I want you to know that I understand. Thanks, that helps a lot. As a matter of fact, I'll send you a report upstairs, and I'll tell them that you weren't responsible. You don't have to worry. It won't backfire. Listen, office politics isn't what's bothering me. You're forgetting a little something. Johnny Pack. Yeah. Johnny Pack walked out of that courtroom, not to mention the men's room, scot-free. The whole machinery, what we laughingly called justice, couldn't even put a $25 fine on him. And the whole city knows it. Wait a minute. The whole country, the 630 News, was on the network. What's the men's room got to do with it? Never mind. Mr. Salisi, the next time I get Johnny Pack in a courtroom, it isn't going to be for vagrancy. And I'm... I'm going to make it stick. Dave. I'm going to make it stick. Dave, Johnny Pack's an old story. You're not the first to go for him. Tony. Before you, there was Hogan and O'Dwyer and Silver in Brooklyn. Look, I'm six men short. Tony. I've got three I can't depend on. I have enough trouble with routine prosecutions. You owe me this. You owe me this because Judge Lowenthal talked to me like a delinquent caught with a half a dozen hubcaps? And because, because Johnny Pack's suit coat is lined with orange silk and his teeth are three shades whiter? Why do you have to talk like that at 10 o'clock in the morning, huh? I want a budget. And I want Malloy and Kovacs and somebody from accounting and cooperation. I want those cases you dumped in my basket given to Riley and Schwartz and Jameson and anybody else. Tony, I want full time on Johnny Pack. And how am I going to explain it upstairs? I think I'm knifing them in the back. I mean, Johnny Pack is top-level stuff. It involves liaison with the federal building. I know, I know. Tony, you owe me this. You owe me this because I stood up there and took your licking for you, and you know it. All right, all right. All right, I'll juggle assignments, and I'll get you three weeks. All right, three weeks. Huh? Be reasonable, huh? Hey, now don't work up a budget of difficulty explaining... Upstairs. Dave? Dave? Dave, it's seven o'clock. Frank, what are you doing here? Why don't you go home? Why didn't you say that at six when I'm supposed to go home? I'm sorry, Frank. Hey, did you know at the age of 17, Johnny Pack actually had a job? No. Yeah, for the D&B Transit Company. He uh, pushed a cart up and down 7th uh, Avenue full of dresses. He was laid off. A month later, he was an employee of the Independent Dress Manufacturers Protective Association. Wasn't that uh, Herman Magliel's racket? Yeah, he got a pretty good memory. In his capacity as an employee of the uh, Protective Association, he was arrested on July 7th, 1934, for assault. Again, on August 12th, November 17th, etc., etc. No convictions. In 1936, he made it. 
suspicion of homicide. A union organizer was found on a lake in Sullivan County with Johnny's ice pick in his kidneys. No, no indictment. It's a regular Horatio Alger story. With pluck and luck, he rose in the organization and as a consequence, is no longer arrested for such simple menial things as uh, assault and homicide. It becomes more genteel. Policy, compulsory prostitution. <laughs> He has reached the white collar level. Finally, he achieved the ultimate in respectability, 1955 income tax evasion. Likewise, no conviction. Well, the Federals try to get him, too. Not to mention the Harrison Commission. Mm. What makes you more efficient? Oh, for the 20s, nobody ever bothered to try and look a poem. Until finally a couple of accountants put him away. Times change, power shifts, political influence changes. I just need to start at the bottom. Somebody to get me on that first run. I'll climb right up the pack and knock him off the ladder. You ready to start? Yeah. I'll try and dig somebody up for you. See you in the morning. Stock at 1456 Louise Abogado. Louise Abogado, you are charged with violation of Section 974 of the penal law, keeping of place for game of policy. You have uh, entered a plea of guilty and appear now for sentencing at this time. Mrs. Abogado, you're pleading guilty. Do you understand what that means? No. Have you talked to a lawyer? Uh, Your Honor. Wait a minute. Mrs. Abogado, you understand that I can send you away if I think uh, you're... Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a delay in sentencing. What for? We want to carry down, Tom. All right, all right. Case adjourned. Bring her along, son. Hey, Mrs. Louise Abogado, you operate a candy store on Avenue D. Yeah, sure. That's right. Listen, mister, can I go home now? My daughter's uh, watching a store. She's like 15, see? And she's supposed to go on an afternoon session to uh, Eastern District High School. Mrs. Abogado, you're in trouble, very serious trouble. You pleaded guilty to possession of policy slips. Huh? The numbers. The numbers. Uh, I never took no numbers. Oh, uh, man, give me an envelope to hold for him, that's all. I didn't look inside. What, what I want with numbers? You pleaded guilty. You have two previous policy convictions. You did uh, 30 days in the Women's House of Detention in 1961. Listen, mister, don't put me in there again. It's dirty. They got five, six women, a room smaller than this, and they're screaming all night. Look, I got veins from the candy store. Mrs. Avogadro. Who's the controller? Yeah, who's the controller? Who picks up the money for the numbers? Uh, what's his name? What does he come? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Mrs. Avogadro, it's a third offense. I can go to the judge and ask him to put you away for up to a year. In a woman's house of detention? No, you couldn't. A year for numbers? Believe me, I can. Dave, isn't there a suspended sentence? That's right. There's a 60 day suspended sentence. You'll have to serve that, too. And then another year. Well, I can't hear with that thing going. I said you'll have to serve the suspended sentence and then another year, Mrs. Abogado. No. Oh, listen, mister, I nearly went crazy in there. And all that cursing and hollering and the women screaming for a shot. And you couldn't keep clean. One thing I got to keep clean. I got to wash my hair in kerosene. Who's the controller? One year and 60 days. And who, who take care of my daughter? She, she couldn't mind the store alone. She's she going to end up on the street. Who's the controller? What's his name? Garrison. Who's the controller? Listen, they walk her past that place on 6th Avenue, you know. My daughter, Teresa. You can hear all that cursing and hollering. They walk her past and they pointed on her and they said, your mother's in there. She was in junior high school. They did that to her. <laughs> Listen, you wouldn't put me in there. If I tell you, you let me go. All right, I'll make a deal. You tell me what I want. And I'll go to the judge and see if I can get you a fine and a suspended sentence. They're gonna 
Send somebody to beat me up. Maybe do something to Teresa. We'll protect you. One year in the house of detention. One year and 60 days. He comes every day, like uh, three o'clock. Picks up the numbers, papers, and the money. What's his name? Mr. McVeigh. What's his first name? I don't know. It's like uh, Stitch. Stitch? I don't know. That's what they call him. He comes every day, three o'clock. I think he was a fighter. Now, wait a minute. Um, Stitch, golden gloves, a welterweight. Yeah, he beat on the grocery man three, four weeks ago. What grocery man? Um, across the street, that Italian fella. McVeigh pulled him out on the street. He kicked him. They, they sent for ambulance from St. Vincent's. You saw this? Uh, sure. He come in the candy store right across the street. He's standing there drinking chocolate egg cream. And the Italian fellow laying in the gutter. Mister, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. No, he won't, Mrs. Avogado. He won't kill anybody. Frank, look up Stitch McVeigh. Three felony convictions, assault, armed robbery, auto theft. He did five at Elmira, three at Auburn, and 18 months at Dannemora. Come in. What do you want this? Three felony convictions, and Italian grocer makes four. Two coffees. You think the uh, Avogado woman would testify against McVeigh? A BLT down. I think I can convince him that she would. And uh, two cheeseburgers, that's a buck 45. You want to give him a deal? He's a controller. I can push him into naming me a banker. I'm one step closer to Johnny Pack. Uh, you got a quarter? Yeah. Fourth offense, that's life. I'm in a pretty good bargaining position. There you go. I think so, huh? You're gonna let him cop out clean on assault. So long. I want Johnny Pack. If you want the big fish, you gotta be willing to pay the price. Come on, let's go. What about the food? Never mind that. I want to get a warrant for Stitch McVeigh. There he is. Kidding you guys. I got Look, a slip. McVeigh, you had now. policy slips in your possession. Now you better go along with Mr. Cox. Do you report to Johnny Pack? Personally, he wouldn't even know my name. Who do you know? Oh, listen, it's policy, you know. I make out a tally sheet, I leave it in a bag with the money. A little bag with uh, a little like a zipper on it. You can't carry your sneakers in, you know. I leave it in a park car on 22nd Street, and some guy picks it up from Who there. Who picks it up? Listen. Give me a regular chair, will you? I'm telling you, I got a bad back. I got this slip disc. My back hurts. How'd you throw it out? Working over Dominic Rossi? Who's Rossi? Who's he? An Italian grocer. He's in St. Vincent's Hospital with internal injuries. Listen to me, McVeigh. I'm not talking about a gambling rap with your lawyer coming in with a bail bond and you're fine. I've got you on assault. Fourth offense. That's life. What are you talking about? You heard what the man said. I'm talking about Dominic Rossi. Assault. 346 Avenue D on December 14th. What are you out of your mind? You're busting me for policy. What are you talking about? Now, get this straight, McVeigh. I'm talking about a felony. 
fourth offense. That's a mandatory life sentence. Sit up. Oh, watch out my back, will you? You understand, McVeigh. You haven't been booked yet. Now, what do you want? Accepting policy slips or assault? What do you want from me? The name of your banker and everything you got on Johnny Pack. Look, I already told you, I can't give you anything on Johnny Pack. I don't know him. You got more on him than I do. Why don't you let me alone? All right, Burns, I take him upstairs and book him for assault. I'll get a complaint out. We'll have an indictment by Thursday. Oh, watch out, will you, my back? All right, all right, wait, wait. All right. All right. Oh, come on, will you? Give me... Well, I can't give you Johnny Pack. Because I, I ain't got him. Your banker works for him. Yes, yes, I know that. I know that. Outside of Brooklyn, everybody works for Johnny. Then give me the name of your banker. I don't want a full buyout. 100%. You better swear you ain't gonna ring in a felony all of a sudden. If I can make what you give me stick, I'll drop the Rossi assault charge. How do I know you ain't got something else up your sleeve? Look, if you've got something on your conscience, that's your problem. This is the deal. Talk and you're clean on the Rossi business. That's it. All right. All right. You want the banker is Willie Weasel. Who? Weasengall. Willie Weasengall. You know him? Yeah. Where do you meet him? Uh, there's this little donut place on 26th Street, and then there's a record store. Anyway, that's where I used to meet him. The last couple of weeks, he ain't been making the street much. Why not? He tangled with Johnny. What about Weasel figured he wanted in, you know, on John. He's the banker. How much further in could he get? No, no, no. Not policy. Junk. Willie started cutting in on Johnny with the junk. Narcotics? Maury, you know anything about it? Listen, I'm telling you guys the truth. Personally, I wouldn't touch junk. You can't trust the customers. You guys get a junkie in a cell, he's going to spill everything for a shot. How did Wiesenkopf move into narcotics? He made a connection for a coffee can full of the stuff coming off a of freighter. Listen, that's all I know. Listen, I got a right to a regular chair. I've been wearing an orthopedic corset for my back. You want to see it? Worth it? If we can get Wiesenkopf, it is. He's just one step away from Johnny Pack. And he's got to talk because he's in the middle. Dave, it's going to get tougher. What? Willie Wiesenkopf is in narcotics. You gonna give him a buyout, too? We haven't got him yet. It's all right, McVeigh, let's go. Where? Downtown. You rotten lion. You said a deal, a cop-out. Don't worry, you got it. I want a list of every place you ever met Willie Weasel. Everything you know about him. And it's still on, the deal? Yeah, it's still on. Would you... Excuse me, um... Doris, why don't you two do the other piece? I'll be right back. Dave? Uh, we haven't seen Doris and Arnold for two months. I just want to check these things over. Oh, well, it's a little embarrassing. Well, we finished the piece and we've lost our audience. Well, well, darling, you don't need me. You play for yourselves. Well, you know, that's huh? not the point. I just want to look these things over. I'll be right out. We have two of our oldest friends. You can't just withdraw like this. Just withdraw. I'll be right out. I'll put the coffee up. You go out and play. Do, but I have been looking forward to this evening for a long time. Well, they had to get babysitters. Oh, Phil, please. Come on. Well, it is a little embarrassing. But it's just that this is a little more important, that's all. Johnny Pack? Hmm. Next best thing. Willie Wiesengoff. He's lost. How careless of him. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Johnny Pack is looking for him, too, but I'm going to get him first, baby. I've arranged to get every narcotics tip that comes up, but so far everything leads in ever-decreasing concentric circles till it flies into its own tail. And that's what you find more soul-satisfying than our chamber music? 
We each have our own form of expression. Well, what do you do with this Willie when you find him? Make a deal with him. Use him to get Johnny Pack. Smiling Johnny Pack. Short for Johnny Packajack. Johnny Pack. Johnny sure. Pack. The trouble with you is you're in love. <laughs> you're in love with Johnny Pack. Well, you think about him all day, and as far as I can tell, all night. At any rate, you're certainly not concentrating on anything else. He's the one person in the world you long for. That's the pusher. Now watch, he'll pass the deck of heroin. He's got it palmed in his hand. probably cleaned out. You sure he's a weasen cost pusher? That's what I heard. We'll find out. And they're still young. He's probably heading for the wholesaler for a new stock. You could be right. Let's see where he takes us. Unfortunately, nobody recognized him, but he showed the films over at the Bureau. Milton Fernari. 
Also known as Fats Farina. It was lousy luck. We had him right in our hands. Did you check the registration? Phony. Where'd your boys finally get out of the truck? A couple of hundred decks of heroin. Cut pretty thin, about 5%. Wheezing cough isn't giving much value for your narcotics dollar. You figure hijacking? No. Farina had another man with him. He took off after the wholesaler. If it was hijacking, they'd have gone to the stuff. In that case, they were after the same thing we were. We didn't go. Yeah. Only they weren't about to waste time following the whole center. They wanted Willie Weasel, and they were going to shake it out of him. Oh, he got away. He got away from Farina, but he got away from Farina's buddy. Yeah. That's the question. Want me to rewind the film for you? No, it's all right. Look, I'm sorry about letting Farina get away. Just one of those breaks. I didn't know who he was. That's all right. I just hope we find Willie Weasel before somebody else does. Hey, Dave! What's up? I found him. Willie Wiesenkopf. Came through from uptown. Who's got him? Nobody. He was in a rental car by the Kingsbridge Freight Yard. Two 38 slugs in his head. Oh. How long ago? A couple of hours. He was shot sometime last night. Early. Salisi was looking for you. I'll bet he was. I got one step away. I got as close to pack as Grosskopf did in the 40s, only I would have gotten him. Would have, sure. I didn't shoot Willie Wiesenkopf, and I can still get Johnny Pack. How long did it take me? Three weeks, that's all. I can start from the bottom and still get him. Now what am I going to do for man hours, huh? I got an office to run. Howard's out with an appendectomy, and Phil Lambert has a vacation coming, and enough. Dave, enough. As a Monday, you go back on regular assignment. I got that stock fraud business and the shotgun murder, and there, look at them. Oh. But Johnny Pack. Johnny Pack? What is it? In the whole county of New York, there's only one criminal, Johnny Pack? Forget Johnny Pack already. He's a big one. And I can still get him. You just let me fill another case. I don't want this. No, no. You're protecting him. Now listen, Dave, you're twisting my words. The day comes that I protect Johnny Pack. And you can't pull me off full time. Don't you tell me what I can do. Oh, Dave, listen, you're losing your perspective. This office is only so much time and so much energy. Now take it. But that's the point. You knock off the big one if you hook the big fish. And the next biggest fish becomes the biggest. My mother had a proverb like that in Italian. But Johnny Pack, I had him right in my hand. I don't want to hear about him anymore. Dave, listen. Before Johnny Pack, there was Costello. And before that, Luciano. And before that, Big Tim Sullivan and Boss Tweed and the Hudson Dusters. I know I can knock him off. You know something? You're like Thomas Carlyle. What has that got to do with it? He had a philosophy of history. Great men. Everything. Great men. Napoleon, Caesar. That's what you are. You're the Thomas Carlyle of the district attorney's office. You think that all crime depends upon one man. A great czar or something. Oh, come on, Tony. And at what cost? I mean, who is this McVeigh? Policy collector. And you made a deal with him on an assault charge? He gave me Willie Wiesenkopf. Yeah. And where did that get you? Well, every prosecutor makes deals, you know that. Yeah, but you gotta use discretion. <laughs> you gotta figure a decent balance, this for that. And you gotta keep your thumb off the scale. Ah, oh, Dave. You're not Captain Ahab, and Johnny Pack is not the white whale. Was Moby Dick on the late show? <sighs> Never mind. You know, you think there's some great magic that can do the job. It's like mowing a lawn that's full of crabgrass. You cut it down, overnight it springs up again. Just do the job. Johnny Pack is the job. Not for you, not full time. That was a Monday. So long, Johnny. Thank you, Charles. The Miller Hoffman stock card case as of Monday. I suppose the lazy figures. Johnny Pack is like the poor we shall always have with us. Monday? Want we'll to do a little overtime over the weekend before Monday? Oh. Look at that lead from Homicide. Didn't they call you? I was in Salisi's office. Wiesenkopf was picked up in front of the Hotel Belasco on 7th Avenue by a man in a 62 convertible. Any witnesses? 
The doorman, a lady at the newsstand, we some coffees to work out at the gym there. That's how he was spotted. And the man who picked him up? They said he was fat. Very fat. We showed him a picture. We got positive identification. Fat Sparina. Oh, Frank, I love you. I love you. Why were you getting out of town? My brother lives in Los Angeles. The plane was going for Puerto Rico. When did you last see Willie Wiesenkopf? Who? Willie Wiesel. When did you last see him? I don't know any Wiesenkopf. There were witnesses who saw you pick him up in front of the Velasco. I don't have to say nothing. Where did you take him? Listen, could I send out for a sandwich? Look, I ask you a question. I'm supposed to get dinner on the plane. He wants to send out for a sandwich. We're in business. Take a look at that. Mr. Farnari, I'm Dave Coster from the district attorney's office. Oh, yeah, I heard. You're the one who couldn't pin vagrancy on Johnny Pack. <laughs> he was in the news. I'm the one, all right. Say, you had uh, quite a time finding Willie Wiesengarp, didn't you? I went with him. I wasn't looking for him. Well, Fats, I'm afraid we got you on film. See? That's where you ran Willie's wholesaler onto the sidewalk. We identified your friend there, Morris Tosti, huh? That don't mean nothing. So we went for a ride in the street, was wet. Did uh, Johnny Pack send you looking for him? No, oh, he skidded all the bitch. Did Johnny, Did Johnny street, Pack wet, tell you to kill minute. Willie Wiesenkopf? What, am I crazy? Even if it was true, am I going to tell you? If you're smart, you are. I want Johnny Pack, and you can give him to me for murder. <laughs> I'll give you nothing. I'll give you... That's... About three hours ago, the state police outside of Albany picked up your friend, Morris Tosti. He was heading west on the through edge. Mm. Poor man, he filed his car into the rear end of a milk truck. He's a lousy driver. They found a 38 shell under the seat. It's being checked against the gun we found with Wiesenkopf's body. That's his problem. Hasn't got nothing to do with me. Maybe. He's in a hospital up there after the crack-up. I'm sending a man there. They're going to let him talk to uh, Tosti tomorrow morning. I'm going to offer him a deal. Because I want Johnny Pack. Listen to me, Fats. I've only got one deal to give on this. So you make up your mind. Who gets it? You or Tosti? You crazy or something? That's the oldest bit. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to play him off against me. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing, isn't it? You make up your mind. What you want to do. Be a witness at a murder trial? Or a co-defendant with Johnny Pack. You better grab the chance while Tosti's coming out of anesthetic in Albany. Look, I don't have to say nothing. All right, Pat, sleep on it. Make up your mind before Tosti grabs the chance. Go ahead, sleep on it. Okay, to give a buyout on murder? It's not the first time. And it's a chance to get Johnny back for murder. Frank, I never thought we'd get him for murder. <laughs> We're gonna get Johnny back and for murder. And it'll be worth it. You pay the price, you get the big fish wrapped up in Monday morning's newspaper. When did it happen? I see. How many times? Where is he? Yes, you take him down there. I know, I know. You better call Tony Sleazy. It'll take him 40 minutes to get down from New Rochelle. I'll be right down. Well, what, what's the matter? I've got to go downtown. I suppose it's about Johnny Pack? In a way. He steals you from me very bad in the dead of night. I shall name him as correspondent in the ensuing divorce action. Well, it isn't funny. That was Frank Malloy. It's a 15-year-old girl that's in Vincent's hospital. Beaten. Well, what has that got to do with... She's got a couple of broken ribs. Her face is cut up. Some internal bleeding. Is she going to live? She doesn't weigh more than 95 pounds. She must have kicked her. You got her outside a movie. Uh, have you got the address? All I've got's her name. Abogado. Teresa Abogado. I got her off a school subway pass. Abogado? I have the address in my office. You know her? 
I know her mother. I gave it to the precinct. They had a patrol car checking the store every round. Listen, you, you can't follow a 15-year-old girl around all the time. This is her now. Precinct. Patrol car caught him coming out of the alley. What do I book him for? Assault. We can change it later if we hear from the hospital. All right, come on. Wait. Listen, Coster, I want to talk Take to you. Take it downstairs. Come listen, on. we can make a deal, huh? You know, I, listen, I got some information. No deal. No, no, listen, I can give you plenty. You know what you can do? You can let me plead to a misdemeanor. No deal! I told you it was dangerous. I told you it could backfire. If the newspapers find out that we had McVeigh in here and let him go... That's hindsight. I followed standard procedure, you know that. Every prosecutor uses accomplice testimony. How does he get that? He makes a deal for a lesser plea. How many times have you traded immunity for testimony? But you gotta use perspective. It's a very sensitive business making deals with criminals. You gotta know where to draw the line. I drew a line. Right up to Johnny Pack. Dave. You can't take all the crime and the rackets and the rot in this city and call it Johnny Pack. He isn't the devil incarnate. You're blinding yourself. Listen. I've just come from St. Vincent's. All right, I gotta face the truth. I put McVeigh on the streets. And he beat that girl and she may die. And it's because I made a deal. I know that. It's an awful responsibility. But I've got to believe it was worth the risk, because it was the only way I could get Johnny Pack. Dave, listen. And I've got him. That's the important thing. Pat's free in a talk this morning. I traded him a plea for manslaughter, and he gave me Johnny Pack. I've got the complaint drawn. I'm going upstairs to get the warrant. I finally got him for murder. I thought you knew it was in the papers this morning. You haven't got Johnny Pack for murder. It's not likely he'll pull out enough to answer questions. I'd give him anywhere from an hour to a month. Depends on his strength. He had a rough jolt. Not many people would have survived it. Yeah. Was there anything else? Nothing else. thrombosis got but whether you did because they're still pushing heroin in the streets and they're still running numbers and a painting contract they just called about a about an extortion complaint dave listen to me now you can't let yourself get into a private duel not on the city's time and money and you gotta keep the whole picture you think one man is is, is the enemy and, you, and your judgment goes right out the window it's like thomas carlisle said Everything doesn't depend upon one. So at least he don't throw Thomas Carlyle at me this morning. All right, all right. I mean, maybe it's a good thing that Pack is going this way. I mean, I mean, you can think about every move you made. You can ask yourself, was it worth it? Was I right? I mean, that way maybe you learn something. I mean, no, I know. Just leave me alone. Easy. Back at work. 